Hey everybody, it's Simon from Custom Off-Road Bash Place. Now I've brought Cameron in from Can't Faulted 4x4 with his big Bajera Sport rig. We're gonna run through a fit up bash plate video for you and show you why you need them and how to do it, all the tools and stuff like that. So you ready, Cameron? Definitely ready, we got... Bentley's even gonna help. And here the bash plate's right here, we're gonna get for you, buddy. Sure. Let's get into it. So for someone buying a set of bash plates off you, what can they expect to get in the kit and what tools do they need to use? Well, you've got to take 10 bolts off. Yep. There's 10 factory bolts. They use a 12 socket set. Yep. And then we get eight brand new bolts and you need a 13 socket set to put those back on. The 10 is for the wind deflect if you want to take that off. But yep. we'll explain that later. You can trim or take it off. Rattle gun makes it so much faster, so much better. And of course you've got your socket and a pair of pliers. What do we need the pliers for? Well, we don't. We don't need this one. <laughs> so, so essentially, we only need three tools. That's right. Now check out what we have factory, mate. It's just a piece of tin on here, and then underneath your diff and your sump is just all plastic and like a sand scoop, and that just fills up with sand. I mean, it's pretty bloody terrible. What do you reckon, Bentley? And this is when people say to me, yep, I've cleaned my car after I've been on the sand. Good old factory plates. This is why we call them the sand scoops. And look, there's even glass in it. So let's get this off and start the install process. Okay, let's start taking these off. So I like to loosen up these bolts here. Then take the front two off. And slide it out. And then it's just a matter of hitting every bolt here. It's pretty light, so it's not gonna fall on you or hurt you or do any damage. Yeah. Right, so this is the panel air guide or I don't know, wind deflect or something wind like deflector, that. Yeah. I don't know, it's meant to design to hit the wind to go up there like that. With the design of these plates, mate, we can trim it up or we can take it completely off. Now, I took it completely off because it sent the red dust up from Cave York, yeah, remember that? Yeah. And just clogged up the motor. So what do you want to do? No, I'm a fan, let's take it off. Well, just yeah, need that 10 mil 10 and then mil. we'll start to take it off. As you can see, the difference between our plates, the stainless steel compared to the factory plastic stuff. Now, the factory is a little bit wider, but it just turns into a, a big sand bucket. So we've made it a little bit narrow to cover the vitals, but you can still get in there with a hose and clean it out. And you know what? It looks heaps better as well, I reckon. They're pretty cool. This is what happens when people go on the beach without getting bash plates, mate. What do you reckon? Yeah, see? All right, so this is what we're putting on your car. We got your front plate. Yep. That protects the radiator. We got your sump diff plate. And then this is the transmission gearbox plate. So when we go to install, we're going to go this one first, overlap by this one, yep. and overlap by this one. Now, a real handy tip I find is just to peel off where the bolt holes are on every single plate. Don't try and peel the whole lot off because otherwise you're gonna sit there and just little bits and pieces. It comes off a lot easier when it's on the car and it's fixed on there. So let's get the plates ready and then we'll um, start putting them on for yeah, you. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so the first plate we're gonna install is a transmission plate, which is gonna go from oh. this front. <laughs> what did you just do? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to the two welded mounts at the front of this cross member into the holes that are inside of the cross member that holds up the transfer case. So line her up. Okay, let's get the first one in. Now, all you got to do is just find out at the four holes at the back here, which model is your suits for lining up to the hole, bring it across, and it's the back holes on your Bajero Sport. Now, if we go diagonal like we've done now, it then helps hold it so you can get the rest of the bolts in. So let's finish this off. So with the sun plate, what we're gonna do with this one is just to get it up in between the washer and the transmission plate and just put it up. Now, we get the bolts over here and we're just gonna go in one bolt, couple turns, so it catches. There's a special trick about putting the front plate on that you can't just put it in, slide it in and push it up, but we'll show you in a second. All right, buddy. Now, final piece of the puzzle is we'll get the front plate. Yep. Okay, now you hold the front plate. So the easiest thing is what we've got to do is work it up over the lip of the um, member. You're lucky you got a bull bar, so yours is in its back. So it goes up here, pushes up on the sump plate. Now this bolt here, we take it back out, slide it across, put it back in, that goes on. Grab another bolt, 
And once we again go diagonal to take the weight. Done, let it go. Always find it's best to tighten up where the front plate and the sun plate meet. They'll pull everything up together in line. One main thing I always do is double check with the socket to make sure everything is nice and tight. Because when I use a rattle gun, I only use a 12 volt, so I don't strip the threads that are in the chassis. There's nothing worse than having to retap holes and trying to get all those back in there. So, and there we go. And look at that. And that's all good. Let's get this plastic off. Chris, you left all your bloody fingerprints on it. Always like to go down to Bunnings, get some steel clean. And it costs what? Five bucks. Shiny, we all like shiny things. I do like a few shiny things. Well, there we go. Pajero Sport fit up and like, how easy was that? How mate? easy? What was it, about 10 bolts off, eight bolts on? Yeah, mate. And we just did on the hoist. So I'm gonna throw up a couple of videos of actually doing it at home on the driveway to make it look so easy. and Give you a bit of an idea that you can do it at home. So, but we're gonna have more videos come out of our adventures, where to go, what to do. So you've got Cameron on Instagram. What's your Instagram? Can't fault it, four by four. And on Facebook as well. On like Facebook name. as well, yeah. And you've got me, Custom Off-Road Bash Blades, or look up the Bash Blade guy. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, just search Custom Off-Road. It'll be on the website, and what's the website? Customoffroad.com.au. So, thanks for watching, and remember, subscribe, check it out, and jump on and purchase. Yeah, cheers, guys. Well, thanks for watching, now. Bye, there! <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you staying? Yeah. Sorry, mate. We'll be too much two seconds. We haven't we talk from it. All good. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> What's up? Hey, it's over. And all right. <coughs> <laughs> well, that's very simple. What was it? Eight bolts. Ten bolts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so for someone ordering a set of mash plates off you. <laughs> oh, mm. <laughs> camera from Can't Fall Boy. <laughs> <laughs>